All right, howdy boyos, and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. And in this video, I'm going to take a look at one of the two new factions introduced in the Reds DLC coming December 1st for Wargame Red Dragon, namely the Yugoslavians. The other nation is Finland, who is in a coalition with Poland, and the Yugoslavians are in a coalition with the Czechs. I will take a look at both nations, obviously, both Finland and Yugoslavians, but today's video will focus on Yugoslavians, and the video very, very soon will focus on the Finnish. Obviously, as I should really mention, I have no way <laughs> in hell... Like, I'm going to be able to pronounce these names correctly, not for the Yugoslavians, and definitely not for the Finnish. So, if you are from Yugoslavia or from Finland and you see me mispronouncing something, please be so kind and, you know, either let, like, let me know in the comment section or just write the pronunciation down so, you know, in future videos I don't seem like a total idiot. Then again... These are pretty rough names, and I actually kind of understand why people have trouble, like, you know, speaking out the Dutch units in Wargame Red Dragon. And even then, I feel like they're pretty easy compared to some of these Finnish and these Yugoslav unit names. Anyway, as always, we're going to start off with the logistics. I'm going to disable the Czechoslovakia tab now. We're going to just... Oh, why are, you, why are you being a bitch? I just want to pee the very best. Okay. We're just going to obviously play or show the Yugoslavian. So we have all these tabs obviously are all failed. It's a full nation. I think the DLC last two times was 5 euros. I don't know if it's going to be 5 euros or 10 euros now because there's two nations. But that's something that I don't know and we don't know till December 1st. Um, and obviously we're going to start at the logistics tab. And one thing that I picked up on in, as they were streaming some of this DLC is a very interesting new thing. Um, personally, I don't play Wargame Red Dragon multiplayer too much. I do it sometimes, and uh, most of the time it's in houses versus friends, so I don't play against like the most MLG elite best people in the world, but even we know that helicopter CVs are, they're not that good. They cannot hide in the forest, they have, you know, they're, they're sometimes they're fast, but usually they're on the bit on the slower end because they're like MI2s or um, the old Huey. So they're 200, 230, 240 kilometers an hour at the most. And they're not the fastest ones you can get. Um, and like I said, they have no offensive weaponry and they used to have bad optics. However, without a price increase, they actually have given the CV helicopters for almost all nations as far as I've, you know, quickly took, like saw anyway. They have gotten... Decent optics, almost recon level optics, which means, this is actually very good optics, um, they sort of have a role now. If you want to have an expensive recon helicopter that has the ability to capture, the recon, the CV helicopters are now an open and decent choice for 100 points. Of course, you know, there's some recon helicopters like the Russian Mi-8 I forgot the name, MI-8R, I believe, which is 80 points. There is a 110 point MI, uh, or um, there's an MI-24 that's 110 points. I mean, obviously those have some weapons, um, but now you have 100 point helicopters, or maybe more like 105, 110 point helicopters with very good optics, which is good because it means these helicopters are actually going to be useful now. Well, to a small degree, but that's enough. Obviously here we have the HK-41 Commandni, which I think this is just a MI-2. Um, obviously, if I do get these units wrong, let me know in the comment section so other people, you know, in the comment section uh, can read, can learn, can read, can learn from mistakes I made, especially on the pronunciation, though. Then we have, I assume this is going to be Komando or Komando Odelnie, 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 I don't know, but... We have the Pinsgauer, which I think is uh, this is already, already in the game. It's a uh, it's a wheeled vehicle, good of good speed on the road, obviously good autonomy, but or good autonomy, but bad speed off road. We have the OT Tab seventy one. This just looks like a BTR that we already have in the game. Obviously, different camouflage, um, decent, very good off road speed actually though. And it has the AP power, which is something that I wish some of the 50 cal transports had in War Game Red Dragon. Then again, I feel like if all the 50 cal transports had AP power, there there was probably some imbalancing going on with some of the lower point transports. 
Then we have the OTM 60P with an MG that looks like an MG3 almost. That looks that looks cool. I, I actually like the look of this. I think I've seen this before though. And then we have the 60PB, which ooh, has a recoilless rifle. Isn't this a recoilless rifle? 1400 meters. Yeah, that's that's a, that that sounds like a recoilless rifle actually. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's it's got some interesting 10 it's it's even got HE power so you can use this vehicle both against infantry and vehicles. It's actually, you know, most most of the Corus rifles on infantry you can use against uh like other infantry, but on vehicles usually um, it kind of depends. But this is this can be a good unit to push up or recon a forest with, um, or just at least you know protect your CV infantry because obviously they're not going to do jack shit. And then we have the Comanjo Ogelnie, mispronouncing that totally obviously, in the Gazella, which this is the uh, this looks like the recon Gazelle, and the Gazelle actually has. A one, two, two fifty cal Browning machine guns, one on either side. Again, it's not gonna really save you, but you have a chance to, you know, kill one infantry unit that's like sneaking up on you. Then, oh god, this looks amazing. The M eleven oh seven MK SK, very good off road speed. Obviously, a good on road speed because it's wheeled. Damn, this this is an interesting vehicle. Looks like like a Volvo, but I can see this. This is a very good unit. You know, it's only 100 points, very good off-road speed. It's also very small, um, and it looks fucking baller. Like it looks like one of those things you would see in old um, in old movies. Moving on to the Cot uh, BRDM two U. You know, just one of the center BRDMs in the game. It's got a little bit more armor than this unit. Obviously, it loses some speed in the process. Um, I personally, it depends on whether you're playing like a 1v1 or maybe 3v3. In a 1v1, I'd take an armored CV probably over an unarmored one, but in bigger games, I just take these quicker, you know, unarmored and unarmed vehicles. The T55 AK, which is just, you know, your standard T55 tank, but made into a command tank. It's got a gun, it's got some armor, you know, it's just an armored, re armored CV. And here we have one of the cool units that the, um, Yugoslavians, almost said Serbians, but obviously doesn't include everyone, that the Yugoslavians get. The M84 AK. The M84, <coughs> pardon me. The M84 is a indigenous, not fully built, because obviously it's built, I think, upon like previous T-72s that they got from Russia, but these M84s are remade, remodeled, and um, definitely upgraded versions of T-72s. And their uh, Yugoslavia's own kind of main battle tank. They made, you know, they edited them themselves. They changed them themselves into M84s. And the thing, it seems like what's really on these M84s is their accuracy, which is something that I usually, as far as I've played the game, only really see on Blue 4, like Japan. And China has some good accuracy guns, but it's, mo it's mostly Japan and Germany, which have some really high accuracy and good stabilized guns. But again, look at this. It's a 170 point tank. Okay, it's a lot of points, but it's because it's, it's a command tank, but it's got a great accuracy, good stabilizer. So you could even run away with this tank or run at an enemy. I want to push it up too far, obviously. It's still a command tank, but it's got, it's got a lot of decent stats for a 170 point, you know, command tank. And I can, I definitely like the fact that it's got decent accuracy and a good stabilizer on one of these, you know, T-72 chassis tanks. Then we have the VBK M60PK, which is just a command vehicle with a 50 cal on top. We have, <laughs> we have two trucks, FAP, FAP 2026A and the FAP 2832A. The first one for 15 points carries 800 supply, and the second one carries 2400 supplies for 40 points. We obviously have a FOB, no point in showing that. And we have the HT40 Teretni, which is an MI8 with 1500 liters of supply. We're gonna say the infantry for last because they're probably the more impronounceable stuff. Moving on to support, and I saw some of these units in the stream, and I was, 
I, I, I was kind of astounded by some of these units. They look really insane. Here, we have a 40-point infrared, not radar, infrared missile launching system for only 40 points on wheels. Okay, granted, it only gets two missiles. So... This is something that you're going to have to supply or going to have near a fob or going to have to have choppers or anything like a, a resupply vehicle close to it. Okay, I'll grant you that. But a 33 plus 3300 meter range on choppers and a 2600-ish meter range on, on planes, which isn't terrible. I mean, it's not great, but it's definitely not terrible for a 40-point unit. But 60 accuracy and 6 HE power... I mean, again, you need to have a, a, a unit knit with us to keep it resupplied, but that's that's pretty good. I mean, I don't I, I don't have like an immediate um, unit on, a, on another faction because I don't play the game enough for that. Like, I'll totally 100% like tell you that for sure. But to me, as someone who doesn't play this game that often, this looks like a very strong. Well, I mean, I play this the single player stuff, but that's not so much multiplayer. But this looks like a very strong unit. The fact that you have the infrared, so it cannot be seeded, and the fact that it has that long range means it can almost outgun, if not outgun, every chopper in the game. You know, in a one v one, which is pretty good. Down to it's, well, it's only got two missiles, but here you go. Then we have the RSPVO Cub M. The Cub obviously is a unit that you would see in the Cub, the Buck. They're all kind of the same missile launching system. They are a radar guided system. It's got one more missile than the Praska, Praka, Praka, whatever. Fill in pronunciation however you wanted to. It's called the RL4M. <laughs> the RL4M obviously has one less missile, but this thing does have a pretty good range against planes. Low accuracy. It's only a 45 point unit, though. Very good HE power. So when your missile hits, it's going to destroy some choppers and stun almost, you know, put planes to the brink of death. They'll be stunned. They'll be routed if you're lucky. And above all, you know, if you stun them and they cannot, and the, the, the commander's trying to evac them and they're, like, stunned, you're going to you have, like, another system behind this unit that's going to take them down. So it's a good unit to have in the front lines. It's only 45 points. Yes, it is going to be able to be seated. But then again, it does have a pretty good range against airplanes and a acceptable range against choppers. If they don't know it's there and they get a little bit too close, this guy has a good chance at hitting them. Obviously, it only has three missiles, so again, you need to keep a resupply unit close, just like the RL4M. Now we have the RSPVO Neva M1, which <laughs> I saw this and this one in the stream, and I was kind of going like, holy shit, what the fuck's going on? Okay, so we have a 90-point Neva M1. It has four missiles, and if I'm not mistaken, these are pretty much the same as the North Korean uh, Pon J launcher V600P. And these guys are also V6, so they're the exact same. They have very good helicopter range, pretty decent, amazing airplane range. 65 accuracy with a 9 HE power. This means that they can destroy everything they can even destroy or start locking on to planes that are seed there's only like maybe three or four seed planes that have a longer missile range on this unit than this unit has on them there's some seed units that have like what 4200 meter seed i believe so this thing can even attack the seed plane before it can engage this so you know you're probably going to lose this unit in a 1v1 against a seed but there's a very big chance this guy will get a missile off and even either stun it or, you know, be able to kill it if it's already getting, gotten hit once. So definitely a very good unit. Again, low amount of missiles, but they're really good. So, but this is where I was kind of freaking out. The RSPVO Neva M1T. It gets, <laughs> it's the exact same thing. It's the exact same stats. The only thing is, this one isn't seedable. This one is infrared. 
it's pretty ridiculous. I don't know. This might be, as far as I'm concerned, I think this is like the longest range infrared launching missile system. I think the NASAM for the Norwegians, I believe, comes close, but I don't think it reaches 4,550 meters with the rockets. Though it has some more. I think it has six, whereas these are four, but... God damn, like, <laughs> this is something that's gonna fuck the day up of anyone who flies over not realizing it's there. Then we have some of these lower Strela units. We have the Strela 1, which has, you know, the four Strelas and has low accuracy, but it's mainly like an anti-chopper roll or an anti-transport like, chopper roll. And we have the RSPVO Strela 10. It's your standard Strela that the Russians have and so many Red Fire Nations have. 12 missiles, you know, it's just a standard anti-helicopter defense. Then we have the RSPVO M90 Sava, which has longer range, Bit more accuracy, bit more HE power, bit more suppression. It's a prototype, though, so only available to Marines, mechanized, armored, and support. Then we have the SM82M60PM, which I'm assuming because of the 82 is a mortar unit. It has 82 millimeter mortars. You know, it's not much to be said about this. It's, it's got a 50 cal to defend itself. I mean, that that's it. <laughs> it's not much I can say about that. Then we have the SO105 Priest. Oh, priest, but I'm assuming that's, you know, priest, because this is the 105 millimeter howitzer, the, the priest, and I think the sexton was based upon this thing. The priest obviously was an American artillery in World War II. Um, I mean, it's a 45 point howitzer, 5 AP, 5 HE power, very low range, very big dispersion for that range, but... It's only a very low cost unit, and it's World War II, so I mean, it's got to be cool, right? Then we have the Gvadzika, the SO-122. This is a standard, I think, unit that the Russians and, some, and a couple other nations get, which actually has a cool thing because it can fire both indirectly, but very bad dispersion though, or directly, but it doesn't get much better when you fire this thing directly, so... I mean, it's got 6 HE power, and it's got 90 AP power if you fire at close range, but I don't really see. I mean, yeah, it's an artillery piece. If you only want an artillery piece, then I guess get this, but I don't see, like, a point in ever bringing these bad howitzers. Then we have the Nora B, which reminds me of those German flak trucks, you know, where the Germans put a half track, and they put a flak 88 in the back. This is the M84 howitzer with a 155mm gun, Pretty good dispersion, nice HE power, mediocre. It's not the terrible range. It's got good range. Reminds me of the, pardon me, the French artillery, uh, the Cesar, I believe. It's kind of the same idea. I think the Cesar also has a 155 millimeter gun. I think the range of that though is better. But other than that, this is a very interesting truck. 120 points though, but. It's got, you know, a decent amount of shells, so you don't have to resupply it every fucking single second, unlike this, which only has 36. Um, and it's got, you know, it's obviously it's on wheels, so it's fast, can transport itself fast, and it has a rate of fire of six per minute. So you can, you know, if you get two or three of these, let's say you get three, you can still rain down 18 shells. That's, that's, that's pretty decent. Then we have the Spat Bob 3. This reminds me of the KM900 under the South Korean tree. I'm not sure if it's the same thing, though, but it's a non-radar guided AA unit with... It kind of reminds me of the... Uh, what are those units called again? The Vulcans for the Americans, which are, you know, infrared, but they have uh, a pretty interesting stat here with decent, very decent anti-helicopter range, and they're only, you know, they're not made to kill them immediately, but they're going to stun them. They're going to annoy them. You're going to not be able to drop infantry or get close enough with attack helicopters because these three or four of these low-cost little 30 points are going to just piss you off enough where you're going to have to take them out first or figure out a way to work around them. For example, you know, you just use planes because their plane range is terrible, and they're not going to be able to track a plane quick enough to do enough, enough damage to it. 
Then for 10 points more, you upgrade the cannon to, oh my god, that looks ridiculous, the Spetbov 30, which improves the guns from a 20 to a 30 mil, gets a little bit more range, a little bit more suppression. You actually gain fire rate as well. The rate of fire increases by almost 100 rounds, and you do a little bit you know, a little bit more of accurate accuracy as well. So, interesting unit. Kind of was expecting this to be a radar-guided one, but again, I guess I they already have enough radar-guided stuff by just using this one, Jesus Christ. Um, then we have the spot fucker. <laughs> the, the spot fucker. Oh, this this is actually our radar guided one. Woo! 30 millimeter twin auto cannons. Reminds me of the um, Kulian, the German Flakpanzer for a Kulian. Flakpanzer via Kulian. Kulian. I don't know how to pronounce it in German, but it reminds me of that. Twin 30s, radar rounds. Um, very good anti helicopter range. Acceptable plane range for a 45 point unit. 50% um, accuracy. It's even gonna stabilize. You can drive this thing and gack planes and stuff from the from the from like while you're driving in a column. Low HE power, but it gets the job done because it's even got three frontal armor and it's got that twin 50 mil or sorry twin 30 mil. And it's even amphibious. It's even amphibious. I don't think okay. Does it got amphibious? We already knew that. These things are already okay. Well, obviously okay. So this thing is actually amphibious. But the look of this, maybe think it was a flamethrower tank and not an AA tank. And then last but not least, we have three interesting rocket artilleries. We have the SVLR M77 Oganj, or I guess Oregon or Oganj. Maybe that, that might be a, a misspell. Obviously, the, this is like a beta, beta version, so they're still like pictures that might need not like not be 100% correct or names. I'm not sure if that might be a a misspell though. It might be considering that they spelled these well. Maybe they'll see this video and realize that they misspelled or maybe I'm just stupid. Who knows? 128 millimeter 64 Nate Palm rockets with pretty good range, pretty decent dispersion, low low HE power, but it's the annoyance fact, the fact that this is going to just napalm spread your entire town or you know a road. It's gonna piss people off and I like piss people off artillery. Then for 40 points more you get some cluster artillery. You basically got a smirch, um, 262 millimeter rockets, 12 of them with seven AP power. You know, try and uh, hit this in a tree line or somewhere where you know there's lots of enemy vehicles, so you can you know, or even snipe their CV, whatever you want to do. Very nice range, good dispersion. Um, just low rate of fire. It's even got a 50 cal to defend itself with. I didn't even realize about that about the other one. And then last but not least, we have the SLV SVLR M94 Plamen S, which is just just like a God damn, this is actually a good unit. It's got small rockets. It's got 64 of them though. It's got a very lowish range for an artillery unit, but it's got a very close dispersion and good HE power. So you could have two or f three of these trucks and like target them all separately into a city and just weaken an enemy defense before you attack it. Just have them hit three different targets or you could have them hit a tree line or something where you know there's AA. Because the dispersion is low, I can see this being a pretty interesting unit. Moving on to tanks. We're going to, oh wow, this thing looks amazing. The M91 Vihor with a great accuracy for 130 points. It's got a stupid gun that nobody really cares about, I'm assuming the side, the side gun. A stabilizer of 65, only 20 AP power, which doesn't seem that high for a 130 point tank, but the barrel on this looks fucking insane. Holy shit, I do love, do love the look of this tank. No AT gems, which kind of surprises me though. 18 frontal armor and a 80 kilometer speed of road. Pretty, pretty amazing looking tank. And then we have their most expensive tank, the improved or advanced version, the M9, M91A Vihor, which, oh yes. Oh, that looks amazing. That is some serious ERA armor. All right, so we have a two per two armor increase, or sorry, a four armor increase, a two AP increase, and the rest of the tank stays basically the same with some minor side and top armor increase in increasings. But mm, forty point. I mean, it's 
four more front armor, and you do look fucking sexy as fuck. So, I mean, if you want a sexy as fuck tank of this DLC, as far as I'm concerned, this tank is winning that one. The PT-76B for 15 points. We've already seen this in multiple nations. Seems like every nation right now is getting one of these. T-34Bs. Not anything... I mean, by this point, we can almost make a fucking World War II war game. We've got priests. We've got T-34s. I know we've got, like, we've got uh, German half-tracks. I know the Finnish have a, have a Stug. There's, like, Hellcats in the vehicle tab for the Yugoslavians. So we might as well do a World War II at some point. Um, the M67 Patton for 20 points. I don't... I mean, I'm assuming people that, like, play a pre-1980 deck will ever use these but other than that i don't see a point in bringing like 20 point tanks but maybe that's just me and i don't have enough experience with the game but you know it's the pattern it's it's i don't understand why we bring it but maybe someone wants to then the t55a tld it's got you know it's a it's a 30 point tank with just <laughs> it's got a stabilizer i have to say look 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 it's got a stabilizer it's just absolutely trash but it's got a stabilizer for a 30 point tank then we have the T-55A1 Igman, which just looks cool. I always love the T-55 tanks. Um, this actually has the Maliutka P1 AT gem, and I believe that on the stream they mentioned something um, about the Yugoslavians. They never really took missiles other than the Maliutkas, but they did improve them. That's why the Maliutka P1 for like improved one or improved version one um they're trying they were trying to improve the maliutkas so i don't think you see any other atgms on tanks or on vehicles in the maliutkas but there'll be you know improved stages of them or something and this is one of those which actually it's pretty cool because it's on the side of the tank on a turret it looks kind of weird but it works i guess um it's got good range it's got a stabilizer but let's not talk about that um it does have 40 percent accuracy but that basically means that if you if, if you fire all four missiles, you probably hit one, maybe two, but two is already kind of, well, two is, two could be the norm. But if you fire four, you're going to hit one, and that's like almost a guarantee. But the other three, there's no big real guarantee there. Then we have the T-55AH Igman, which is a 15-point more expensive tank than the T-55A1 Igman. But it also loses the ATGM, but goddamn, it looks like a bulldozer. It looks, oh wow, that looks amazing. It gains four more frontal armor, so it's at 11 frontal armor. It gets a little bit of a better gun, although, well, the gun is the same, but it gets a little bit of a better um, AP power. But the in general, this tank is just a lot better, like, armor-wise. We got 11 versus 7, 7 versus 3, 3 versus 2, and 2 versus 1. So this is obviously a way better unit to have if you don't like the risk of taking the ATGMs. Here we get to the T-72M. Obviously, you know, the center tank for the Russians. No really big point in looking at this tank, because I know this has been in multiple nations, including Russia and Germany. Um, but this is obviously the M-84, the indigenous improved version of the T-72M. Um, for 75 points, you get a 10% more accurate gun, longer range gun, you get a pretty decent stabilizer at 55%, 16 AP power, and you have 13 frontal armor. That's interesting. I can, I do like the look of these, uh, M84s, by the way. It's a shame there's only really two, because these are obviously not that, and there's only one more, which is the M84 Advanced, which looks fucking amazing for 95 points you get six percent stabilizer 65 percent accuracy 19 ap power 15 frontal armor um i kind of wish there was some more era armor on it because i always think like era looks amazing on russian tanks well you know yugoslavian tanks in this case but it does look it does look really cool and i i cannot wait to have a battle with these especially because i know bishop who's from serbia actually said he rode in one of these m84s one day so i cannot wait to fight him with his babies all right moving on to the recon tab oh god oh god how am i going to save myself gran 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 sicar grani granichari granichari that's probably it granichari granichari because i'm assuming it means like gren like grenadiers or something they have the m57a2 anti-tank 
bat range, but decent accuracy, mm, lowish AP power, but they're only 15 points with their trucks or 20 points. And they do have, like I said, very good optics and they do look pretty cool. So let's see, they also come in the, okay, BTR. This is a 50 cal. Oh, it's also a recon. Ooh, nice. We have the BOV M86, which is a 15 point recon. So for 30 points, you can grab yourself a armored, an armed with like massive quotation marks, uh, recon vehicle with good optics and a five man recon squad with very good optics. And it's just for 30 points in the same column. It's actually a pretty good deal. And then we have the Granichari or Granitsari in the Gazella with the 50 cal, which isn't a recon, but you can still transport it pretty quickly since it actually does 310 kilometers an hour. That's pretty damn quick. Then we have the HI-42 Hera and the HI-45 Hera 2. The Hera without armor or um, weaponry is very good optics, 50 points. And then the one with FFR rockets and a 50 cal browning on either side is 30 points, but loses an optic uh, level and goes to good optics. So do you want a fighting recon or do you want a passive recon? That's the, the decision you have to make. Then we have the M1107 recon. It's the same truck as the CV, but a little bit different. Um, 120 kilometers off road. This is a fucking speed machine off road. Uh, very good optics, only 30 points. You can see it's being very useful for that low, very, very high off-road speed. Then we have the the Greyhound, Grey, the Greyhound, the Greyhound. Um, obviously, <laughs> the M8 Greyhound World War II recon vehicle looks really nice. It looks also very, very old and like just well fucked up basically. But it's got good, good optics. I mean. It's got shit everything else, but it's got a good optics and it's only 15 points. So, I mean, why not, right? Then we have the BRDM2. And I feel like the strong point of this unit is two things. It's only 10 points. There's actually a couple of good, good things. There's actually, this is a really good recon vehicle, actually. It's got good optics. It's only 10 points. And it has a very good amphibious speed of 50 kilometers. Besides the fact that it has 100 speed off-road, 150 on-road, so this is a very quick, very mobile, because it's amphibious, recon vehicle. And it has the KPVT with a terrible accuracy, an even worse stabilizer, but it's got that 1 AP power. So this thing could potentially be the destroyer of worlds when it comes up against, like, any sort of, you know, low point... Uh, uh, transport vehicle which only has a 50 cal this thing is just gonna wipe that wipe its ass with it it's gonna take some time because it's got shit accuracy but it's gonna wipe the it's gonna wipe its ass with that unit then we have the past if oh god damn it uh the past is v jazz it v jazz it's is v jack jack jazz i don't know how to pronounce that but it's a 50 point recon with very good optics. It's the same unit as the one that is in the support, the RL4M Praka, Praka, Praka. But this one comes with a twin 30 millimeter auto cannon. 25 accuracy isn't the best, but it's got a very long range, especially against choppers. And it's got a decent suppression, kind of low fire rate, but. I can see this thing being able to keep choppers at a distance and have very good optics at the same time, which is pretty awesome. Then we have the IBV M80A1. This looks like a modern transport. It has Malutka P1s and it's got the M86 30 mil, which this is like one of those, it's got single 30 mil. This is like an IFV. This is a vehicle that will support this is like an infantry support vehicle. It's got exceptional optics. It's got well, some amphibious capabilities, but it's not that quick. But this thing is awesome. It's going to be pretty decent at covering um, infantry going to a town with a 30 mil. And when you have captured your town, you can just park this thing right up in the forest line. 12 Maliutka P1s. You know, the accuracy is not the best, but you got 12 of them. 
and the new 17 AP power. It's, it's pretty good for 60 points. It's got a recon, it can fight tanks, infantry, even choppers are not going to like this thing, seeing as it has, you know, 15 to 16, almost 600 meters of chopper range with that single 30 mil. Then we have the Senke. Oh, what the fuck? These guys look fucking amazing, look fucking cheeky breaky as shit. That's a 20 millimeter sniper rifle with a 95 accuracy. It's got one HE power, but the fact it has two AP power. Are you kidding me? That's awesome. You can get them in the recon, recon units. You can get a recon unit in a recon unit. So you can have the vehicle drop them off somewhere so they're quickly at our destination and you know, relatively safe. And then have the recon vehicle spot stuff for them. And then they can engage that at 17, almost 1800 meters. They can even gack at choppers. It's the chopper range is, is just it's not you know worth mentioning at 600 meters, but 18, almost, almost, well, so it's close to 2000 meters with an a AP power of two. With, oh, okay, okay, so it's only got 30 rounds, but it's also an elite trained unit with exceptional stealth. Whew, this is, that's a good unit. That is pretty insane. I mean, I can see that being an interesting unit to use when you know, for example, where their units are coming from or where you can set these guys up in a good area where you can snipe their... Um, you know, incoming transport vehicles, or how oh, you can even snipe, sneak, sneak these guys around into a forest and take out their command vehicle. It's going to take them one shot, two shots, and it's dead with that, like, with that weapon. Are these guys, okay, they're just regular. Oh my god, okay. We have the T-55A East Vijak, which I'm assuming means recon, seeing as this also has the same name, East Vijak, I'm assuming means recon or reconnaissance. You know, it's just an armored recon, 25 points. It's not really worth mentioning, but the M84AM, 15 frontal armor, very good optics. Okay, it's 100 points, but it's an M84 recon, and the M84 looks so cool. This one isn't an exception. I, oh man, I, I wish I could just stop this video right now and play a game with them, but I gotta wait a few days before everyone even gets access to these, sadly enough, but. Uh, don't worry, a video will be coming soon on these guys because I'm really excited. Moving on to the vehicle tab, we have the BOVM. I'm not sure why there is a recon vehicle in the vehicle tab, but like I said, there's probably still some bugs and some smaller mistakes that are... I'm assuming this is one of them. I don't think a vehicle tab should have a recon vehicle in it, but I guess we're going to change that at some point, so let's not look at this too much. This one, I saw this on the live stream, and I, I don't know, like, this kind of scares me. This reminds me of the rocket buggy from Command & Conquer Generals and Zero Hour. You got 24 70 millimeter rockets, 24 57 napalm rockets. Okay, you get short range, but who cares? If this thing turns up to your city and it says, fuck you, and you have three of these guys, that's 48 rockets, that's 96, that's like 142, 140-ish rockets from three of these trucks, including some napalm, and the accuracy is terrible, the stabilizer is worse, you're not gonna fire this thing on the move. You're just gonna get like in a firing line and just start howling rockets at the, at the town or at whatever you're firing at. And this is going to destroy it. And I actually am really excited to be using this specific unit in the upcoming battle. The BRDM-2 Maliutka P, like I said, they only use Maliutkas as far as I'm concerned. And this is the, it's got 18 missiles though. You got, you got 40 accuracy, but it's only 20 points. It's got 18 missiles. You can keep spamming rockets and just, you can buy this unit and forget about it. You can just keep spamming rockets until it dies and then just, Put another one in its place for only 20 points. Very interesting unit. The BOV-1 Polo, which is a Maliutka P1 improved with a little bit more AP power. Does not have infused capabilities, but it does... Let's see, it's got... It's, it's bigger, it's got more AP power, it's a bit quicker off-road. So I feel like this is a slight upgrade, but... You know, for the... Who really needs the amphibious at all all the time? And this does, this does actually look cool. This only has five missiles, though. This actually has six. So I feel like this can fire one more in a salvo. And it's got 
three more AP power for five more points, and it's a little bit quicker off road. So you know, it's your pick, obviously. The BVP M80A. Oh lord, we're coming to the actual. I think BVPs are just BMPs that they um, changed or like reconfigured. And I know that the BVPs are also something that the chicks have, and they're just like redesignated BMPs. But these guys look like BMPs, but they're not actual BMPs because they look different enough from them. Well, maybe they are BMPs. They're definitely different though. They got more armor, it looks like. They look different here from the front. Um, they have a Maliutka and a M55 20mm. This is just like an assault transport vehicle. We have the MVP M81 Vydra. Oh lord. So we it changed from a 20mm. To a 30 mil, or 20 mil to a 30 mil. It's got lots of weird. This might be another design issue because it has five rockets, where it says it only has four. So I'm not going to really know what this is. I think this might be an issue here. Now of the BVP M96 Vidra, which is the same thing. Which even though it says it has five rockets on top here. It says it only has four, but these are Maliutka 2Ts with 26 AP power on a 25 point vehicle. And grant it's only got 40% accuracy, but for 25 points, you can just spam these fucks around. And if they hit something, it's going to be really fucked up. It's an interesting unit. The LT M80A Polo, with Malutka 2Ms, 18 missiles, 50 accuracy, 24 AP power again. Like, that's gonna... You're just gonna knock a hole in most light, in most heavy vehicles, and you're probably going to destroy some of the more lighter vehicles with just one shot at 24 AP power with only 35 point cost, which is insane. I don't know how many of these you can get in a deck, but these are really good AT gems for their price. Then we have the M107, M1107, sorry, Fagot, or Faggot. I don't, I don't like saying Faggot, but I know it's like Fagot, or I think it's a Fagot because it's got only one G. Um, with the Faggot M missiles on there. Then we have the M11, M1107 Drug, or Drug, which has, let's see, 10 more accuracy, 4 more AP power, and you get the missiles. So, I mean, the Drug is obviously better for those 5 points, but... 1980, 1990, well, depends on the deck you're playing, whether you're playing like pre-1985 or not. And then we have the OT-5M, which is obviously um, uh, an M3 half-track for the Americans, not a really big thing here. I believe we're getting to the transport vehicles, so I'm going to skip these a little bit. Then we have the Past Praga, which is... This is just, this is just like the, um, like the uh, Maxon AA vehicles. I mean, they're 30 millimeter auto cannons. They're not, they're just going to rape infantry and they have two AP power. I don't really see a point in this particular unit though. I mean, it's not like amazingly great or anything. It's just like, it's an okay, like, it's just, I don't know. It's like filler. Like, do you need to buy something to quickly fill a line? You buy this, I'm assuming. The Pinscour, like we said, like we've already looked at this. Isn't that the British truck, by the way? The British, don't they use the Pinscour? Then we have the SO76 Hellcat. Yes, Hellcat spelled that way. It's pretty funny, actually. In Dutch, we would say spelled the exact same way, but we would replace this with an A, and then say Hellcat, but that's the only difference, really. Um, it's the 76mm Hellcat from World War II. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say. It's it's just that. Like, it's a 10-point unit. It's bad. It's bad. It's gonna have some unit. It's gonna have some people using this thing and trolling with it. I'm assuming, but it's got low autonomy. It's got a bad gun. Okay, 50 accuracy isn't bad, but 6 AP power. You know, just, let's not talk about this one. And then we have the SO90 Jackson. The 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 I cannot pronounce that word. The Jackson or just the Jackson with the 90 mil. You know, 40 accuracy, a bit more AP power can see this being useful if you're like want to troll the enemy or if you were low on points or if you defend something because with that autonomy you're not going to get it really far before you you know run out of fuel and have to resupply it moving on to the helicopters we have the hn 42m gamma with the meliutka p1s and the strela 2ma missiles it's only got two strelas and they're terrible so if you hit one sharp of this and kill it i'll be surprised but 
you know, only 35 points, so just more of a deterrent than an actual killer, I'm assuming. And then Malutka's, you know, you got four of them, but better accuracy. Okay, it's got some stabilizing, but not that great. But I do like the wings. They look really cool, the wing pods on this one. And then with the upgraded version, comes with Iglas instead of Stradas, which is actually pretty good. Longer range, better accuracy, um, better reload time, too. Better Malayutkas from well, one P1s to 2Ms, so you actually... This is actually not a bad chopper, you know, it's got some simple AA, but it's got pretty good anti-tank for only 45 points. Yes, you're gonna have to resupply this quickly, you're probably only gonna kill maybe one or two tanks with a low, well, medium accuracy, but 24 AP power, and that speed of 310, that is what is, that's what makes this, I'm assuming, that's what will you that's what i would use this unit for it's the speed you can f fly in get the rockets out and get the fuck back to base and be resupplied pretty quickly because of the speed they have the ho 42 gazella which is the same plane we've seen a couple times before we have the hd 40 which is an mi8 with 57 millimeter rocket pods it's that's all it is then we have the HT-40 NRZ-57, which, I, this is one of the North Korean helicopters, it has the same kind of idea where you have lots of rocket pods and a couple of ATGMs, but ATGMs are not that great. This plane, or this chopper, sorry, really focuses on this sp rocket spam, which is trying to suppress targets while you have other units like infantry or something deal with them. And then we have the HT-40 NRZ-128, which sacrifices everything to be just carrying 128mm rockets. So to be honest, between you and me, I guess these are my favorite ones because they actually can destroy infantry. These are, like, uh, I mean, it's a decently fast chopper, but I don't really, I don't know. I If anything, I'd probably go with the uh, HN45 Gamma 2s, but it's up to your own personal preference, obviously. Then we have Air... And now, some, I think four of these planes are actually indigenous. Some of these are not. And honestly, between you and me, I'm not going to be able to figure out which ones are and which one aren't. So I'm sorry. With the J-22 Arao. 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 That sounds like uh, 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 oh With the Arao. The Arao. 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 With eight 250 kilogram fuel air bombs 20 accuracy 11 he I mean, 11 he is actually not that bad um it's got only 750 speed and 10 acm it's got a decent turn radius though it's this is a cheap bomber probably shouldn't take a look at this too much because it's gonna die low speed bad acm no air defense besides a stupid gun which is also bad so a simple bomber then we have the nj22 oreo or 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 or, or a bomber with clusters instead of fuel air bombs and then the last one has both mavericks which are the bad ones it's a 40 percent accuracy once it's got two good ap power but you first got to hit something with these and it's got two 57 millimeter rocket pods as you know kind of like a support i guess you could stun them with the rocket pods and then do another flyby with the mavericks or you know try and do them at the same time i don't even know if the pilot can do that but i'm assuming he can then we have the l110 and this thing, I saw this also and I was like, this thing is amazing. It's got one big rocket pod right there underneath the mouth, which are both anti-plane, anti-helicopter, anti-ground. Low accuracy, no HE power to speak of really. It's got decent speed. Actually, it's not 600, it's actually 750, which surprises me to be honest with you. And this actually has 30 and 90. That's actually really good. I didn't even see 30 and 900, I didn't even see that. But this plane, I mean, it's more of a troll. It looks cool. It looks kind of like World War II-ish. It looks kind of cool, but you cannot really see this being a very useful thing. Although I feel like it should get more rocket pods. There's only five, there should be like, 20 or how many is in there one two yeah it feels like it's like 20 or something that'd be maybe more fair but maybe it'd be a little bit too op then who knows then we have the j21 jestrab which is just uh, this reminds you of that picture of the b2 bomber with like all the ordnance underneath it this has napalm rockets hydra rockets and it's got a twin 50 cal as well you know it's just I don't, it's only 600 speed, so I don't really know what to say about this other than, like, I don't, I would never use this ever. 
Then we have the L12, which is a, looks like a MiG-21 with bad AA missiles and even a worse or like an even worse gun. So like, let's just not talk about this too much. I mean, I like the look of these planes. They're going to be wrong, but don't see a point in using those. Oh, no, good speed. Good, very good speed at a thousand kilometers, actually. Then we have the L-17K with 20% ECM and a thousand speed. Good anti-helicopter unit. The R60M Molniaz have good, have, no, it's the standard helicopter range, but they have 50 accuracy and you get four of them. And the fact that you can also launch the other missiles at the same time means you basically have six anti-chopper missiles, of which four are pretty damn good. And at the good, very speed at a, at a thousand kilometers, that guy can actually fly in, get the kill, swoop out, and not get destroyed. Then we have the L-18, which is a MiG-29 with the VMPEL missile short range and the VMPEL or VIMPEL or v I don't think it's V, it's like it's VIMPEL, VIMPEL, I don't know how to pronounce that. The VIMPEL missiles, very good um, AA missiles for choppers. It's got two good AA missiles for planes, but it's got only, it's only got two and then it has 30 ECM and 900 speed. And then we have the Baby Rafale, which is the L-19, which looks a lot like the French Rafale M, with these Mika EMs, or Mika EMs. Bit of the shorter range compared to this, 84 versus 7700, but you do get better accuracy, better stabilizer, lose one AP power, or sorry, lose one AP power, and lose a couple, lose a bit, like lose a bit of suppression, but you also gain a th 100 kilometers an hour and you gain 10% ECM. So these are really, really, really good anti-airplanes. Like they will be able to keep up with, you know, most of the other nation's planes. The L-15M, which is just a MiG-21 strapped with bombs and cluster bombs, it's, you know, it's the, it will bomb them first, because I feel like bombs drop faster, that will suppress them, stun them, and then the clusters will fly over them and do some, you know, lit some damage when they're already stunned. Then we have the N-62 Super Galeb, which looks like a fat, what's that plane called again? I forget the name, but it looks like a fat alpha jet, fatter alpha jet. It's got four napalm bombs and the N62M Super Galeb, or well, that sounds a bit offensive, Galeb, Galeb, sorry, Galeb. It's good. It's got it's 130 points though, so you should not use it for the AA. It's got decent speed for a plane. It looks as fat as fuck though. 30 ACM and it's actually got very decent anti-tank missiles with 60% accuracy, but they're TV guided missiles with 30 AP. To be fair, like I said, they're only. You only get two of these missiles, and I'm assuming you only get two of these in the card, maybe, maybe even one, because they're very, very expensive. But 900 speed is pretty good for a fat plane like this, 30 ECM, and it's got some self-defense weapons against, you know, choppers or something. And then Navy, there's nothing here for me to look at, apparently. Is there anything for the finish? There's nothing here for the finish either, so... Well, people that ask me, look, look at the, look at the Navy stuff, look at the Navy right now, there's nothing here. And then the infantry, last but not least, Here's where I'm going to rape some uh, some names, so my apologies in, in advance. We have the Br oh my god, the Britska Pe Pe <coughs> the Britska Pez in the either the BTR with the KPVT or the helicopter with the rocket pods on it. This might be their regular infantry. Is this our regular infantry? Okay, it's not. I was gonna say, because that'd be ridiculous. This might be this might be anti-tank, isn't it? Or is it light? Okay, it's light infantry. So they have uh, the M70s, they have the MG3. Is this is this an MG3? It looks like an MG42 almost even. This fight that looks like an MG42, I feel like. Hmm. Interesting. I feel like that's an MG42, not an MG3. But they have the BST M60A, which is a recoilless rifle. Standard recoilless rifle stuff, but they're a 15 men large squad, which will, you know, help their survivability. And I guess, you know, kind of can piss people off when you put this in a town on the edge. You know, killing a 10 man squad is one thing, but killing a 15 man squad requires you to kill five more. And I can see that being pretty annoying for people. Let's switch these back on though. Then we have the Me Meha Mehanisovana. I'm assuming Pez means infantry or something. Mehaniza, Mehanizovana, mechanized, Pez or Pez, 
with the M57A2 launcher and the oh god, they have M, they have like MP40s, but almost they look like MP40s. See, we could freaking do a World War II war game. Where's when is this coming? They're just teasing me. They're fucking teasing me with an MG42 and MP40 lookalike weapons. I'm so annoyed. That's like so mean. Um, obviously, centerline infantry. They come in the BTR, the little weird vehicle truck thing, the one with the Rakota's rifles. Ooh, the BVP with the... Ooh, I like that. That's interesting. And the one that has the 30 mil. And they have the one that comes with the 30 mil and the improved Maliutka. So you can actually go pretty crazy whether or not you want to go for, you know, a, a crappy tracked vehicle or you want to spend 20 more points per unit and you want to get the insane 30 mil with the shitty infantry. If you like, when you go and you buy either this or this or this... You're more focusing on the vehicle that comes with it, and the infantry is more like a shield than using the vehicle in a bad way. But for 25 points, getting an anti-GM and a 20 mil, it's a pretty good deal. Pretty, pretty good deal. Then we have Morna Rica infantry. This looks like they're, these are Marines. I'm assuming they're Marines. Let's take a look. Can I, or they're not Marines. Maybe they're, maybe, well, this room, this would, implied at their marines because that's what i assume anyway they obviously have a cqc weapon they're shock trained they have the lrac f1 with isn't this the weapon that the foreign legion gets very good accuracy very good ap power shame they only have six rockets and a shame they only have 700 meter range but these guys actually are pretty good looking well not the guys but the stats are and then we they come in these vehicles no like real assault vehicle this is maybe an assault ish vehicle but i mean it does he power against infantry so then we have pado bransky or pado branchi that's definitely mg42 isn't it it has to be these are an elite these are commandos the 75 version with are you kidding me okay eugen i surrender i fucking surrender you give me mg42s you give me stugs in the finnish nation you give me hellcats you give me fucking priests you give me mg42s mp4 localized now you're giving me mp44s these are fucking stg 44s i fucking that's like Oh my god, I'm... So, and, uh, the only thing that these guys are obviously missing is an accordion. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out Remove Kebab. It's a meme. But yeah, these guys need, a, like, need an accordion player. But that's ridiculously awesome. These guys have STG-44s. Man, I wish I had fucking... Man, that's... Uh, World War II War Game. We need it now, not tomorrow. They're going to come in a chopper and in the BTR. And then the 90s version is an upgrade because they use the, the bum bear. That's pretty funny. They use the boom bar, with it, which is a you know, static. I think they have to be static for this, don't they? Uh, I think so. They have to. There's, there's a static launcher that has a little bit more range. Good accuracy. Very good AP power. You got eight, eight shots for a two. And they sadly enough switched their MP44s for... Um, Aren't these just AK-74Us? Wait, does he have a scope on that thing? Look at that! Look at that fucking... That looks awesome! Holy shit! That looks pretty baller. I hope this is like an actual thing that does anything. Like a boost or a buff. Because that looks really cool. Then we have the Porous Drug. Standard AT. Or standard, uh, you know, ATGM launcher. We have all these di different vehicles that can come in with. Including these later ones with the ATGMs and everything on them. Oh shit! Wait a second. I did it. Oh, I just skipped one. Oh, oh, oh. I just skipped everything. That's my bad. Sorry about that. I just skipped everything. With the the all these units can come in. You know these anti tank and AA, AA transports. I mean, I call them AA transports because they have, you know, decent AA. Right here. So. Then we have the fagot or the faggot, which is an improved. Is not an improved version. Wait. Oh, the drugs actually improved over the faggot. Okay, interesting. So these guys are not as useful as the. Uh, drug version. Then we have the Proletary. That's shock infantry. These guys look amazing. I'm assuming these guys are airborne. Oh no, they're just what? They're shock though. Oh, this might. What are these guys? Are these guys like? Hang on. Hmm. Are they lights? No. I don't know. Are, what? 
Oh, there is rifle infantry? Interesting. Well, I don't know what that means in this case, but the proletary and the proletary 90, they have a law in the proletary 90. Oh my god, it has the the French Marine one. What is that one called? The French Marine eight, uh, AT launcher. But this one looks amazing. 24 AP power, 50 accuracy. They get good guns. Only thing is they're a, they're a 10 man squad, not a 15 man squad. But I, f I forgot what they're... Uh, what's that thing called? I I don't know. I'm going to take a look at it right now because it's going to piss me off otherwise. Um, where are those guys? They're the Rima. Oh, it's Apilas. Of course, it's the Apilas. Okay, sorry about that. I just wanted to make sure that that was what I was talking and thinking about. I don't know if I need to disable all this. Oh, I just misclicked totally. That was stupid. Anyway, uh, we were... Sorry about that. We were the Proletari. So then you have the Apilas launcher. 112 millimeter. That's an insane fucking... I didn't even... I never realized it was such a big rocket. Jesus Christ. They come in all these cool vehicles, too, which is actually really insane. Because they have, again, like, you can get a 45-point unit, which is... This, this camo seems off, by the way, but I'm assuming that's still something they're going to fix at some point. Then we have the Strela 2M. Let's not talk about this. It's absolutely terrible. This is a... I love, the, I love their glasses in that picture. That looks very MLG, but yeah, Strela 2M. Absolutely terrible. Don't take it. With the TO, which is their militia. See? See, Eugene? You give these guys Thompsons. You have... Enough stuff to make Germany and America, well, that's not true at all, but you have enough stuff to make like half of a war game, World War II DLC. Just give us two nations. Make it war game, Red Dragon, World War II. Make two nations. You can, you can make, you can make it work. You can somehow make it work where you have Germany and America or something so we can have our World War II dreams. Please, this is, you're just teasing me right now with MP40s, SDG 44s, MG 42s, Thompson SMGs. You have the models. All you gotta do is just make them, make them work. God damn it. Obviously, they're just militia. Um, Stopgap measure. I barely bring these guys. And last but not least, we have this silo or silo, which has the Igla one missile and can come in all of these transports, which are all the same. Um, well, they're not all the same, but they're the same as the other ones. So I don't really see there's a point in showing them. But for the cheapest, you get them in this five point uh, movable. Wait, five point. What is the here? Let's take a look at this actually. Strela 2M. Oh, wait a second. Were they? Am I confused? Oh, these guys are way better than actually, obviously, because they're, well, they're not way better, but they're definitely better for those five points. So never bring Strela unless you're, like, playing a pre-1980 or pre-85 deck. Woo! Anyway. Okay, let's not look at the chat, because that's always ace. Eights, thank you guys for watching. My voice is dead and done. I hope you guys enjoyed this look at the Yugoslavians. In a video coming really soon, I'll be taking a look at the finished. Thank you guys for watching. Love to see you in the next one. Cheers.